the spiritual practice for today, uh, to use Sir John's words, is, is this. Give yourself to others for the pure joy of giving. All right, so this is a continuation. Uh, this practice is related to the first video today and to, uh, to this uh, stress upon generosity uh, in Sir John's uh, writings. And again, I will note that this course, this MOOC, uh, was made possible by a grant from the Templeton World Charity Foundation, uh, which uh, is, a, is a fund that has about a, at least a billion dollar, uh, dollars in its endowment and thus is able to fund really important and significant research in areas where science and religion interact with each other. So we are beneficiaries of the philanthropy from the, uh, the providence and philanthropy of Sir John. But, but, uh, but philanthropy isn't the only way of being generous. It's a great way of being generous, but not all of us are in a position to endow billion-dollar funds, maybe not even a $100 million fund. I don't know, maybe not even a $10 million fund. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be generous. We don't have to leave generosity to the big players. So let's uh, the practice today is, is, is simple enough, and as many of these virtues are, they are simple in conception, perhaps, but more difficult in practice. So let's think of ways uh, that we can be generous in the next hour or so. Let's just take a moment and, and imagine or think of a way that in the next 10 minutes or hour or so, we can be more generous. And perhaps think about yesterday as well. How could, if that seems abstract and, and uh, kind of vague, then think about situations in the last hours or day or so in which we could have been more generous. I can think of two or three occasions where I could have been more generous and where thinking about being more generous made me more generous later. Something as small perhaps as, as, as tipping or when you tip or what kind of a tip to give. Small everyday matter, but tips can mean something to people. Uh, a tip may not mean as much to the person who gives it, but a person who's receiving a tip actually probably values it a good deal. Um, so, small matters like that. Remember, let's keep in mind, even with my example, it's not necessarily the greatest example, because generosity isn't just about money. And too often we think of generosity in monetary terms. You know, in the last lecture I was referring, I referred to this notion of going the extra mile, which comes from the Christian scriptures from the New Testament. It's a, a saying uh, attributed to, to Jesus. Well, Sir John, very creative writer. He had his own take on that. He's, he was obviously influenced by that saying of Jesus, but he put it in his own very American, very practical sort of way when he suggested that each one of us give the extra ounce, that each one of us give the extra ounce. And this is a memorable phrase, you know, go the extra mile is memorable, but even more, I mean, how, you know, it may not be as, as, as meaningful to us as giving the extra ounce. And what does that actually mean? Well, I gave a suggestion in my last, uh, in an earlier talk about how I went over an, an email and made sure that all of the information was correct and that it was phrased in such a way that it wouldn't cause any sort of distress to the recipient. That's, that's one way of giving the extra ounce. Um, it, it, he defines it as the practice of always adding just a bit more to our best efforts. And... Um, a practice that Sir John argues, and I think correctly, leads to greater success and fulfillment in life. So when, for instance, uh, when I'm done writing something, uh, a paper, uh, even though I think I'm done and I want to be done, I could actually take five or ten minutes and go back and reread part of it and see if I can't make it better. And I can. I can always make it better. And so by making it better, I make it clearer for my readers. I, I make it more enjoyable for them to read, perhaps. And the result is, I, I may not have planned it, maybe I get more readers. So there, it, the going, giving that extra ounce is a kind of a key to success. Uh, the... Um, uh, William Proctor, the, uh, one, of the, one of the biographers and friends of Templeton, said that there were many aspects of Sir John's life that he found very uh, inspiring, and this was one of the many, uh, one in particular that he found personally useful and practical to give that extra ounce in, in our various activities. So how, how can that work? Well, I did give the example of the email. 
Um, the email can make people see that I'm reliable and dependable because I actually gave correct information and that leads, if I'm reliable and dependable, that's a basic principle of success in life, showing up, being there, being competent, not having, creating difficulties for your coworkers and others. Um, other examples, now, if you drive a lot, and not everybody that's listening may drive a lot, but where we live here right now, driving is just part of everyday life. And um, going the extra, giving the extra ounce when driving in a big metro area might sometimes seem like uh, being a wimp or maybe not getting to where you want to go 20 seconds sooner. Um, or it may even seem to be dangerous. But there are many ways in which we can go the, go the extra ounce when we are uh, uh, driving. Uh, simple things like using our signals when, when turning. And it's that little, this is where the extra ounce really means something. You know, just pushing that little lever so that people behind me will know that I'm turning instead of just stopping in the middle of the road, like when I'm turning into a shopping center a parking lot. And that, that really annoys people. You say, well, why are they so uptight? Well, maybe they're uptight because this happens all day long to people. They just don't know what's going on. It could cause an accident. So that's just the little extra ounce. Of, this is not about money. This is a little bit of generosity. It's like saying to your fellow human being in a symbolic way, oh, I respect you. Remember Confucius, he started with small, small things to create real social change. His genius was to recognize that if we change our our, our etiquette, if we, if we observe the rules of common courtesy, we can actually make, us, uh, make our society change in dramatic ways. And he was, his project was very successful in that regard, and for many centuries, actually. Um, so uh, that's an example. Uh, these days, newer, newer issues, for instance, have arisen. Perhaps you're sitting at a traffic light and the car in front of you doesn't move. And these days, we generally know that the reason why the car isn't moving is because, you know, somebody's texting or they're WhatsApping or maybe they, you know, they're looking at the map and the light is changing and it almost turns red before they move. So, so generosity might be to just check that behavior a bit and be aware that there are others around us. These, again, can seem like very, very trivial uh, sorts of things, but from these trivial matters, when we give the extra ounce, when we take consideration for what, what we're doing and for others, it creates more social uh, generosity. It creates more uh, social cohesion. It creates a feeling of, uh, if everyone were to practice that, our, our social scene would be certainly a uh, much more um, uh, harmonious place. So other situations could be uh, with uh, outs you can think of of your own, I'm sure, um, making room for others in a bus, a train or an elevator. And I don't necessarily mean jumping up. I grew up in New York back in the day in New York City, so I'm an old subway rider and bus rider from back in the day. And uh, I don't know the manners today there, but I know as a child, I would always, a young person, I would stand up for, for an older person. I don't know if that rule still prevails today. But how about standing in the doorway of the train? I remember doing that as a teenager. And when the doors would open, just standing there and blocking the flow of people in and out. Or do you move a little bit to the side? Small matters. Or the other day, I was, in an, I was getting out of an elevator, and people began running in, and I couldn't get out. Small matters like that, very, very small, even picayune, you might say. Who could be bothered thinking about things like this? But this is precisely the place for Sir John where real generosity begins. So I think that what we have to keep in mind is that for Sir John, uh, generosity uh, ultimately uh, is rooted in a uh, spiritual reality. He does say it is, give, is, is giving a greater percentage of our time and energy to worthwhile causes and investment that will pay off. Yes, it is, but he says on many levels, because it's not just at the economic level that generosity pays off, but it pays off because it creates a brightness within our own minds that makes us more agreeable people. And even if we're the only agreeable person in the room, our agreeableness can actually start to rub off on others. This was Confucius's great insight, and I think it's also Sir John's as well.